Hey, welcome to this video. In this video, I will be going over vector word problems. And uh, the objectives is that you should be able to use vector components to determine the magnitude and direction of the resultant vector in the context of a word problem. So one of the things I want you to keep in mind when you are doing these problems is that it's really, you're really doing one thing, and that is uh, finding, let me write this down here, get my pen to work. You're finding the vertical components, okay? So you're finding the vertical and the horizontal components, and you're gonna add those two together if you need a resultant vector, and then you're going to find the magnitude and direction of that one. So they're all the same, <laughs> really they are. They're all the same, you're doing the same work. Uh, and hopefully you see that. I'm gonna give you two examples, but really they're all the same. You're taking, you're taking two, sometimes you're, most of the time you're gonna be taking two vectors and you're gonna add them and find the resultant, and you're going to do that by finding the vertical and horizontal components, adding those together, then with those that you added together, that's the resultant, and you're gonna find the magnitude and direction. I have three rules for doing this. My three rules are one, draw a picture. Two, draw a picture. That's a funny W there. It's a mutated W. And three, um, three is draw a picture. I think you get the picture. <laughs> draw a picture and it's gonna help you immensely, especially dealing with the angle. So let's take a look at our first example here. Find the component form of the vector. So we're just finding the component form of a velocity of an airplane descending at a speed of 100 miles per hour, an angle of 210 degrees. Okay, so I'm gonna draw a sketch here. Uh, 210 degrees is, uh, it's over here. Okay, remember these sketches, I'm not gonna draw them to scale. Here. Now, 210 degrees is going to give me an angle just right here of 210 minus 180. It's like going 180 here, which is 30. Okay, so this angle is 30 degrees. And the magnitude is 100 miles per hour. So what we're going to do is we know that the magnitude of my velocity vector, my pen is just not working out too well today, is 100 miles per hour. And my angle of the velocity vector is 210 degrees. So I'm going to use my components because that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the components. And my formulas for the components were x equals magnitude of v times the cosine of theta. So I'm gonna have 100 times the cosine of 210. And y is gonna be the magnitude of v times the sine of theta, which in this case is 100 times the sine of 210. And I'm gonna plug that into my handy dandy calculator and I'm gonna get negative 86.6 .6 miles per hour and negative 50 miles per hour and these are rounded and this should be should work out in the quadrant that I'm in I'm in the third quadrant both my X and my Y are negative so that's it okay so I have to find my vertical components now if I added another vector in here I would do the same thing with the other vector and then I would deal with it then too so let's take a look at another example An airplane is traveling at a speed of 5,000. I'm gonna go pretty quick here, guys. Um, so I'm gonna tell you this. You're gonna draw your first one. Now we're at a bearing. So a bearing, again, we start zero degrees here, and we go clockwise. So a bearing of 100, a bearing of 120 degrees is going to be about here. Okay, so 120 degrees here gives me an angle of 30 degrees here. Oh, that's weird. That was weird. Okay, 30 degrees here. And then an angle of 135 
It's going to be all the way over here, which is going to give me a 45 degree angle here. Okay, remember that's 30. I don't know if you can see that. So uh, we're going to find our components and we're going to add our components together and that will give us our resultant speed. So let's do the first one and the first one I'm going to say is the airplane. So I'm going to say the magnitude of the airplane is 500 miles per hour and the angle of the airplane is 100, nope it's not 120 degrees, sorry about that. It is 30 degree, negative 30 degrees. Negative because now I've switched it to using this as my angle. You don't want to use, you can't use the bearing angle when you're doing the sine and cosines, but you can use your standard degrees. Okay, and my velocity of the wind, I'll call it W, is 70 miles per hour. And my angle for the wind is negative 45 degrees. Again, negative because I'm going down from here. All right, so then I'm going to find my vertical and horizontal components. So it's going to be 500 times the cosine of negative 30 degrees. 500 times the sine of negative 30 degrees. And I plug that into my calculator. I get 433.01 and negative 250. I'm going to do the same thing here. So my x for this is 70 times the cosine of negative 45. My y is 70 times the sine of negative 45. Again, put it into my handy dandy calculator. I get 49.5 and negative 49.5. Now we're going to put these two together to give me my resultant. So I am going to add the x's together to get my resultant x, which is going to be 482.5. And then I'm going to get my y's, add those together. We get negative 299.5, and that is my resultant vector, R. Okay, now I'm going to take R, and I'm going to find the magnitude of R. We know that that's the square root of these two. Okay, so take the square root of 482.5 squared plus negative 299.5 squared and that gives us 303.36 miles per hour okay so uh, what I'm gonna do is uh, this looks like it goes 482 this way and 299 this way it looks like it's gonna be somewhere around here um, and obviously I didn't draw these to scale so it's actually going to probably be about right here notice though that this is my angle that I'm looking for so uh, when we find our angle we got to be careful because we want to find the bearing we got to put our answer in whatever we started with so our angle theta for R is going to be the inverse tangent of Y over X And that's going to give us 31.8 degrees. However, that's this angle right here. Okay, that angle right here is 31.8 degrees. And what I'll do is, I'll, you know what, I'll clear this out and you can see what I mean by, okay, this is our vector. Okay, this is the angle right here. So we need to find bearing, which is all the way here. So we're going to add 90 degrees to that. And we're going to say that the angle is a bearing of 121.8 degrees. So I have my magnitude and my bearing. 
Remember, we need to put it in bearing because our, our question was in bearing. So to sum this up, you take the magnitude of one of them, find the components. The other one, find the components. Add the components to get x. Add the component of y to get y. Take these and use the Pythagorean theorem to find your magnitude. Then use the inverse tangent to find the angle. Make sure you draw the picture so you can see if you have to add or subtract any numbers to get the correct amount of bearing. Okay, I'm gonna put up a, a practice problem. I really recommend, in fact, I ask my students to do the practice problem. And then um, I suggest you pause it once you see the practice problem. Here's the practice problem. Notice here, if you're in my class, I changed it from number one to number two. We're not doing number one, so just do number two. Um, I, I ask you right now to pause it because when you when you unpause it at this point you're gonna see the answer okay so you should pause it now okay so here's the solution to it um, the, the port we're gonna say is 34 degrees here so um, and this is the the uh, oh this is where it travels afterwards so I'm gonna call that um, B2 so uh, B back here um, so let's start with B1 so B1 the magnitude of B1 that's this right here this is B1 is going to be 10.4 and the angle theta of B1 is going to be 56 okay remember that I'm using this angle right here not this angle here because this was the bearing but I need this angle for my calculations and then my B2, my magnitude of B2 is 4.6, and my angle theta for B2 is zero degrees, actually, because it's going straight across. Now, I'm going to go ahead and find my X and Ys. Uh, my X for B2 is going to be 4.6, and my Y is zero, because it's not going to go up or down. And then my X and Y for B1, uh, remember to find x, we do the magnitude times the cosine of the angle, and then the magnitude times the sine of the angle. So we're going to uh, do that in the calculator, and you're going to get um, 10 point, uh, 5.8 and 8.6. Okay, so then this is our B1 here, and this is our B2. And we're going to add these two together and add these two together. And that's going to give us our R. Okay, so our R here is going to be um, 10.5. Well, five, five, oh, that's 10.4. Oh, that's interesting. And then um, 8.6. And then we are going to find the magnitude. So we want to find the magnitude of R, which is the square root of 10.4 squared plus 8.6 squared. And that's going to give us 13.5. Um, and this is miles. Okay, so there's our magnitude. And our theta is going to be the inverse tangent of y over x. So y is 8.6 over x is 10.4. They're both in the first quadrant, so I don't have to worry about too much here. Um, it's 39.6 degrees. So that's going to be um, that's going to be this right here. And that's going to give us this angle here of 39.6. Um, but I don't want that angle. I want the bearing, so I want this angle here. So I'm going to subtract that from 90 um, to deal with the bearing. And it's going to give me a bearing of 50.4 degrees. Okay, that's the answer. See you later. Have a good day.